it's a monster. Okay, and really what I wanna do is, I want you to tell me what the answer is, and then if anyone needs help, I wanna do it. But does everybody agree? There's no reason for me to do a problem if everybody knows how to do it. And some of them are easy, some of them are a little bit trickier. All right, again, like I said, the majority of these are off of ACT and SAT tests. And then some of them are just from the worksheets that I just pulled just to make sure. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this one I thought was relatively easy. What do we got here, guys? G. I think G, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got G. Right. Now, one way, just to make sure, because I like to show you ways of thinking about it. Most people, what they do is they draw and cut this into two rectangles, correct? Yeah. But for me, the easiest way is just to say it's one giant rectangle and another rectangle is cut out. All right, so to me, it was 10 times 12, which is 120 minus, and then this was seven by seven, 49. All right, that's how I see it, as a subtraction, not as cut and add. Doesn't matter, but just a different way. All right, number two, what do we got here, guys? C. Anybody have any issues? Okay. Yeah, and again, the reason why I'm glad you said that is because it's dealing with radicals again, right? So again, circumference is pi times the diameter, correct? So that means that the diameter is equal to two radical two. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Which means that the radius is radical two. Do you agree with that? And if the radius is radical to the area of a circle is pi r squared. So radical two squared is two. Okay. Right? Two pi. Anybody? All right, thanks, Reed. All right, anybody. All right, if you're not 100%, just let me know. All right, the area is all over standardized tests. All right, all over. And you need to know the formulas, right? So here we go. Number three, what is the area of the parallelogram? This was kind of interesting. Yeah, just 36, right? Base times height. Uh, we did four, correct? Number five. So far, I got an A and a B, so it looks like we need to talk about it, right? So if the radius is 10, the circumference would be what? 20 pi, right? And if it's divided into three congruent arcs, just divided by three. Everybody happy with that? Any issues? All right, number seven. Is everybody agreeing yellow? Yeah. Come on now, remember what I said, guys. Just speak up if you don't know something. All right? Anybody? Pretty easy. All right, surface area. 156, and then I just want you to remember it's meter squared, right? Anybody have any issues with that? Anybody have any issues with 156? Okay, number nine. Yeah, this one, let's just talk about it because some of these uh, are from the book and the book has made some, you know, they're, they're not always clear. So, um, the class wants to paint the game with glow in the dark paint. Each bottle of paint covers about 10 square feet and costs $1.99. To the nearest 10th, what is the area that needs to be painted? All right, so we had to discuss that. So, if we're going to paint something, right, we'd be painting this, right? And possibly the back wall, right? Would you paint the bottom? Yeah. yeah. Why would you paint? Why would you paint? It's just, I think 
I wouldn't paint it if it's if I'm going to put it on the floor. I think what it's asking is you do the formula for the triangular prism and then you subtract the side from the table. Yeah. Right, but I'm not painting. And again, that's why I don't care what you put, right? But come on, are you gonna, if you're going to set something on the ground, do you paint what's on the ground? I think you just paint what is visible, right? And some of you are saying, well, I can see the bottom. Yeah, well, all right. I don't care if you paint that. All right, I wouldn't paint the floor. I would just paint the two rectangles. Do you agree? And then there's one hole, correct? I think that's what it's saying, right? So if it were me, I would have done uh, 2.25 times 3.75 times 2 minus pi times half of 0.75 is 3 eighths squared. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry. I don't know why it's here. I know why it is. My screen has been messing up here. There we go. Now it's pretty good. All right. So somebody tell me if that makes any sense. And then if, of course, if you wanted to paint the bottom, then you would just have another 2.75 times 2.25, right? Any issues? And then after you get that answer, you just multiply it by what? Why two? Oh, you're gonna paint the front and the back. Wow, I didn't even think about that. He wants to paint the inside. I'm not sure I paint the inside. It's kind of like I wouldn't paint the floor, but some of you would, I guess. You got all that extra money, I guess. Why don't you do time three over eight instead of three over four? Three fourths is the diameter, right? Yeah. Half of three fourths is three eighths. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. All right. So this one is a little suspect here. All right. I, I, I don't care how you see it. If you want to paint like Brady, he likes painting. So he'd probably paint the inside and the outside. He'd probably plate the floor and, you know, he'd probably underneath it, he'd probably paint it, right? He'd paint the whole thing, all right? But if you're like me, I would have just painted the two walls and then cut out the hole, all right? So again, I, I don't really care what you got. And then it's $1.99 per square foot, right? No, per, bottle. per 10 square feet. So I think you had to buy two bottles. Is that correct? Why did three times not buy three times? Three, because some of you like to paint. So, yeah. all right, I, I don't care about that problem, but you get the idea. All right, number 10. All right, these are the ones that are important. All right, what is it then? 75 over eight radical three plus 60. Anybody else? I thought that. I was I thought that, but plus, mm -hmm. plus what, say? Plus 120. Plus 120. Yeah. I thought the same thing. I think mine is just a decimal. Yeah, try to, try to leave it exact. Now, 75 over eight is. I think it's 75 over four. Oh, somebody said 75 over four. Grady, Grady, you didn't say out of our sheet. You went over. It's the exact same problem. You already did this problem. So is that how you got the right answer? No. Well, I just. Oh yeah, it's coming out now. Right, right. You just looked it up, and since you know I don't make mistakes, you just went with that. Right. That. Thank you. Thank you. That's why. Finally. All right. So, uh, shall we do this again? Yeah. All right, so look here. Don't forget it's a hexagon, right? Mm -hmm. So because it's a hexagon, there's six sides. So now it's <clears throat> one half 
the base is 2.5. All right, now again, we've talked about this a bunch. So the height would be 1.25 radical three, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, and then we say one half the perimeter. Well, six 2.5s is what? 15, and the slant height looks like eight. So half of eight times 15 is definitely 60. And then these I like to say is five fourths, and this is five halves. Six times a half is three. Three times five times five is 75 eighths. So I like it. So whoever said this? All right. You are a winner, not a loser. You're in good shape. All right, but now number 11 is the problem. All right, number 11 is the real problem. All right, so I need everybody to make sure because we have to use what on this? You have to use a little trig, that's correct. All right, there aren't any radicals because it's a pentagon and a pentagon does not divide into uh, special right triangles, all right? No, it does not, all right? So here, just in case you're unsure, if we call that the center, we're gonna break it down into five triangles. So here we go, five times one half. The base is still what? Seven times. Now, come on now, here's this triangle. So I'm gonna draw it over here just so everybody remembers. All right, you're definitely gonna have to do one and it's one on the test I think is a, a hexagon and then something that you have to use trig to solve. All right, so here we go. So we have this. So then you draw this down right here, and you remember if this is seven, that makes this 3.5, right? All right, now I need this angle right here, which is, no. Why is it 36? Yeah, because you take 360 and you divide it by five, that creates a central angle that's 72. So this is 72. So then half of that is your 36 degrees. All right. And you're still looking for the height. So now everybody needs to be able to tell me what trig function are we using? We're using what? Tangent of 36 is equal to what? Right. So now H is equal to what? 3.5 divided by tangent of 36. And then that goes in here, all right? Now remember, we're not doing the rounding first, we're doing rounding last. So you're supposed to keep that in your calculator, all right? So that answer goes in there. So five times one half times seven times the answer plus, and then what? One yep, one half of what? Perimeter. Yes, perimeter. one half perimeter times the slant height. So we have one half, the perimeter was what? 35, and of course the slant height is what? 15. 15. All right, so just type that into the calculator and we'll round to three decimal places, which was what? Three forty-six point eight oh three. You said, and then we would say inches squared. Come on now, this is where you make sure you're doing it. All right, don't just you know write down my information. It's really not that hard. It's really simple. Really, really simple. The only thing that might be a little confusing is the trick. All right. Everybody good now? All right. So let's knock out. We talked about number 12 yesterday, right? Yeah, that's kind of a silly problem, too. It's a book problem. All right. So here we go. Yeah, some people had some issues with 13, right? 
Right. Well, again, I'm always telling you, they're trying to fool you because this right here is just a what? That's a trapezoid. You don't need to break that down. Right. It's a giant trapezoid. So that area in here worked out to be what? Someone tell me. 61, 61.8. All right. All right, so we're doing 6.5 and 6.5 is 13. 13 plus 1.6 is 14.6, right? 14.6 plus 6 is 20.6. 20.6 times 6 divided by 2. No, I'm just saying the area of the trapezoid. What is the area of the trapezoid? We can't have all these different answers now. Somebody said 57. Yeah. Brady, you're messing up today. 61.8. Is that right? All right, we're going to go with Charlie today. All right. Now, again, here we have this triangle this triangle and then we have another what trapezoid what who said well, how about the trapezoid who was it so now this is one half base times height which is did anybody get 32.5 for that yeah right it's simple I I uh, I actually solved for the side. What what was? I solved for the side. I need some help with the other trapezoid. What's the area of the other trapezoid? Fifty one point three five. Did you say? Is that right? And then the other triangle was four point six four. So the total area was roughly what? 150 point, all right, inches squared. All right, anybody have an issue with that? Yes, the big trapezoid or the small one? 10 plus 5.8 equals divided by two times 6.5. Well, I can't help that. 6.5 is from here to here. Okay. All right, 14. The canning company produces cans from for chicken soup. If each can has a diameter of two and a height of three and a quarter inches, how much aluminum is needed to make one can? All right, I don't care about rounding, of course. All right, let's try to stick with pie. So... I'm dealing with the surface area, correct? Yeah. So again, we should all be able to write surface area, two pi r squared plus two pi r h. Did I agree with that? All right, surface area is two pi, what did we say the radius was? One, One. wow, plus two pi times 3.25. Pi, uh oh, where he said pi. So then, final answer surface area is 8.5 pi square inches. Anybody have any issues? All right, here we go. A factory makes plastic barrels. The barrels have a diameter of 2.25, a height of three. The plastic used to make them cost 260 per square foot. What would be the cost to make 10? All right, how much? Somebody said 26 bucks. Anybody else? 110 point what? I don't know, 112 point what? 15, good. How, how much? 90, I didn't hear you, 9281, what is it, 
Mo? I didn't ask what wasn't the answer. 208. All right, I'm happy with that. 108.7. Okay, this is embarrassing. Okay, here we go. Um, the barrels have a diameter of 2.25. So again, we're doing surface area. Surface area equals two pi r squared plus two pi r h. Now, I really feel like you should be able to recite that pretty well, right? This is just two times the base, right? This is the perimeter times the height. That's what it is. Everybody's good with that, right? All right, because I want you to amaze your teachers next year when you rattle off all the formulas, everybody else is standing around going, what? All right, again, simple. The diameter is 2.25. So that means two pi, the radius would be 1.125 squared plus two pi times 1.125 times the height, which is three. All right, now do me a favor. Do you agree there's pies in both of these answers? Everybody agree with that? Yeah. So you can just multiply it out, but leave the pie out. So do two times 1.125 squared plus two times 1.25 times three. Somebody tell me what that is. This is what I want right here, guys. 25 or 29.158. Yeah, like 29.1. No, no, I want the whole thing. Okay. 29.158. Did anybody else get that? Yeah. What? Three is so. No, I said 9.281. 9.281. Did anybody get that? All right. 9.281 pi is the surface area of what? of one, we need how many? Yeah. 10. So then it would just be 92.81 pi, and then that would be square feet. And then all we have to do is multiply that by 2.6 and multiply 92.81 times 2.6. Two forty-one point what? Three what? All right, now, listen, because we're dealing with money, we got to go ahead and multiply out the pi, right? So what is that again? Seven fifty eight point oh nine. That's the dollars, right? Where where was everyone on this? I, I didn't I didn't I divided by the money. Wow. 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 All right. Hey, hey, listen, come on now. I I, I don't I no one was really close, so we got to make sure this is good. Ruffin, tell me. Shh, hold on a second. Ruffin, what? How did I get what? Um, yeah, guys, how did you get 750? Multiply by 250. No, and then you can multiply. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So let's do this. Let's do this. It's 92.81 times pi. Do that for me. That's 291.56. Hold. 291 point what? Five, seven square feet, right? Then multiply that by 260 because that's how much it costs per square foot. And what is that? Is that what we said? 758 point what? Oh, nine, because we're rounding to pennies. All right, Sam's got a problem. Go. How many barrels are there? 
All right. Anybody else? Right. Anybody else? All right. Wow, I didn't think that was that hard. All right, here we go. Okay, now number 16, critical problem here. Drew. 9.522. What did you get? Okay, so again, let's let's not make this difficult. All right, once again, all right, the ratio of the areas, please listen to me. All right. The ratio of the areas, just take out your handy dandy calculator and just do 588 divided by 272 and tell me what that is. And then hit math, enter, enter. One point five two two. One forty seven over what? 68. Okay, so now that's the ratio of the areas. Now, I need to find the ratio of the sides. So the ratio of the areas, remember, is A squared to B squared. So just take the square root of that. So take second square root, second answer. And then you're not gonna be able to math enter enter because these are not perfect squares. So it's not gonna be able to change it to a fraction. But that means now that A over B is in the ratio of what decimal? 1.470 oh, blah, blah, blah. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. That means that the larger rectangle is 1.47 times greater than the smaller one. Now, once again, I say this every single year. I don't think that's that difficult. Now you look at it, am I going from the large to the small or small to the large? Large to small. So it has to get what? You have to get smaller. So I would have to what? You have to divide. All right, so now everybody take 14 and divide by that answer. All right, blah, 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 9.52, whatever. All right, easy, 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 easy. All right, moving forward, guys. Um, who, who asked me about that? Does that make sense now? All right, here we go. Same principle here again, guys. And I know these are the same problems. They're the same problems for a reason. All right, it should be easier now. All right, so again, I'm 16 to three, right? So that's the ratio of the sides. So that means the ratio of the area is 256 to what? Nine. Now remember, I'm going from the large to the small, so I want it to get smaller. So we're going to divide by that, or because it's a fraction, we can say multiply by the reciprocal. So this is just 38 times 9 over 256. And then, which is what fraction, please? Thank you. And that would be square meters. I did 16 squared is 256. Come on now, again, I, I think if you understand, it's simple. I don't care what the numbers are. Simple. Anybody else want me to explain that? Bo, are you okay now? All right, somebody else. Charlie, you doing all right back there? All right, anybody? All right, let's keep going. All right, so now we have similar trapezoids. So it's in a ratio of what? Five to two, is that what you're telling me? All right, so now the ratio of the areas would be what? 25 to four. All right, let's see if we don't make the same mistake we made last time, correct? Right, so if it's 25 to four, then if you charge a thousand for the smaller one, 
then you would charge what? 6,250 for the larger one, correct? And this is where we made the mistake last time. Yeah, we want for both fountains. So that would cost me what? $7,250 for both. All right, yes. Well, because you just take a thousand and multiply it by 25 fourths, right? Because it's 25 fourths times greater, which is what? 6.25 times greater. All righty, here we go. 19, surface area. Okay, for some reason, people had trouble with this. All right. So now this problem is the base is a what? Equilateral triangle. It's an equilateral triangle. And because it's an equilateral triangle, that means all the triangles or all the sides of the pyramid are going to be exactly the same. Does everybody agree with that? All right. So again, how many times have we done the area of an equilateral triangle? I can't even count. All right, so everyone should be able to just knock out one half times the base, which is what? 1.5. Okay, so come on now. The height would be? Thank you very much. All right, anybody have any issues with that? All right, and because I like fractions better, I would rather say one half times three halves times three fourths, radical three. And so that's what? Nine over 16 radical three plus one half the perimeter. And the perimeter was 4.5, which is nine over two times the slant height, which is what? Five halves also. So that'd be plus 45 over eight meters squared. Anybody have any issues with that? And I don't care if you have the decibel, whatever 9 16 says. All right. And 45 over 8. Yes. So you can multiply fractions together. You can multiply numbers together. You don't multiply a number and a radical together. Yeah. Right. Yes, you can join them together. That is correct. Right. Square root of three plus two is the square root of three plus two. Square root of three times two is two radical three. All right, here we go. 20. All right, what is that, Charlie? 20. One diagonal of kite is twice as long as the other if the area of the kite is 400. Okay, so what's the formula for area of a kite? Half the diagonals. Yeah. And again, if you forget, that's what you got an iPad for. Yeah. Area of a uh, kite. And I'll tell you, all right? So again, area was what? Yeah. 400 equals one half X times what? Two yeah. X, correct? So wow, 400 equals X squared. X equals 20. So one diagonal is what? And the other diagonal is? And then we would say that they were meters. Well, that was kind of easy. We're relating one to the other. One is twice as much as the other, Sam. 20 times 40 times a half is 400. Okay, so now everyone is supposed to understand, right? Come on, this is just one giant what? It's one giant rectangle, all right? It's one giant rectangle. So the width is what? 102. And then the length was how much? How much? 
five seems a little high. Five hundred what? Say it again. I'm sorry. All right. So then the area would be what? Fifty-eight or fifty-five. Eight. All right. Fifty-eight thousand five hundred what? Inches square. What's this digit? Four. Four. All right. Anybody have any issues with that? Okay. So that's nice. And if you feel like you knew those, then I feel like you're in pretty good shape. All right. Now, again, I'm just letting you know our test is what? I don't think it's possible for me to go over all these problems in one day. All right. So those of you guys who are concerned about your grade, I don't really want to assign homework, but you know, it would be nice if you sat down with your iPad while you're watching the Bucks destroy the Kansas City is do some math problems. All right. I'm telling you, I can't do them all on Monday. And we can sit on or we can sit down on Tuesday and say, okay, flip through and tell me the ones you want me to help you with, but we don't have time to do all 40 problems. All right, or 30, whatever left. All right. So my advice for those of you guys who didn't do as well on the last test is try to do like odds or try to go through and do every other one. Or for those of you guys who just need to make an A, just do the whole thing. All right. I don't think it's that difficult. All right. And most of the time it's just to help you learn the what formulas, in my opinion. All right. Sectors. Okay, area of the surface area of a cone. You know, I just don't. Oh, here's a trig problem here. Right, I'm just looking through. Here's another trig problem. Here's a 39 I already did once where we can skip 39 because I wrote it in twice. All right, does everybody understand what I'm saying, right? All right. I will do whatever you need me to do on Tuesday, but the test is on Wednesday. All right. So now we have like 13 minutes. All right. Don't sit there and do nothing. All right. Get to work. <laughs>